Hey, what is up guys? My name is Eterno. Welcome to episode 11 of Game Programming. Okay, so yesterday we took a look at this, um, at this pixel that was flying through our screen, and the problem was as soon as it reached the bottom, it crashed. Bum bum. Now, at further inspection, if we actually do confirm the perspective switch and switch over to our debug tab, um, you'll be able to see up here that it says that, you know, suspended exception. So that's the reason why it was suspended. Array index out of bounds exception. Now, what is an array index out of bounds exception? Let's, uh, first of all, let's terminate the program and then we'll switch back to our Java view. So what is an array index out of bounds exception? Um, out of all the errors I get um, in terms of, not, not me personally when I'm programming, but um, in terms of all the, all the emails I get and tweets and whatnot of people um, saying that they've got an error or an exception, Number one on that list, in terms of how common it is, is array index out of bounds exception. For some reason, it's not only an exception or an error that um, is very common while programming uh, games especially. So not only is it actually a very common error, it's also one that people cannot seem to fix. Um, and I don't mean, but obviously by people I'm referring to um, people who uh, might be new at programming and don't know what it is, not people in general. So in other words, you guys, you're kind of like my target audience. You aren't exactly, um, you know, professional programmers, so you don't know how to deal with it. Um, so today, apart from actually continuing on with our game, I just want to touch a bit on, on array index out of bounds and really how to fix it and what it means. So first of all, right, what we've got is an array. Now, um, Let's look at it this way, right? So we've got an array called pixels. If we actually run it, so again, we, we hit the run button this time, not the debug button. Um, it's not gonna switch over to debug. Instead, as soon as it reaches the bottom, you'll see it actually printed out some stuff here. So if we just terminate this, we can actually read this, this exception code. If we go over here, it says that it happened at, you know, the package at the, in the render method. And if we actually click here, it'll show us the line of code. It'll highlight the line of code in uh, which the array index out of bounds exception was actually, um, how do I say this, was, th was thrown. It was thrown in this line of code. Now why? Well, obviously we've got an array here called pixels. Um, and this is our pixels array. It's the only array in the line. So the problem is obviously with pixels, but particularly with what, it was, with what is inside pixels, since that is what defines the actual index of the elements in this array. So firstly, we've got an array called pixels. Okay, that array, is given a size. That si the size of the array is width times height, which in our case is, let me just open calculator real quick. I'll switch back to normal view. Um, I'm actually really sick of this height thing. So I'm literally just gonna um, change it probably to whatever it actually is because just because I'm explaining to you guys and it could be um, difficult. So if I just, uh, work it out. So it's 168. I'm just going to run it, run it, round it up. Oh, I'll drop it down. So it's 168. Okay. Um, again, I've replaced it with that just because every time I, I keep forgetting what it is. And every time, um, I explain the code, I always, um, I always, uh, have to have to work it out again. So again, you don't have to change that. I just did just, just for sake of me being able to explain it better. That's the only reason I changed it. So our, 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 uh, the size of this array that we've got right here is width times height, right? So therefore it's 300 times 168, which I'll work out as well here, which is 50,400, okay? Just remember that, 50,400. In fact, I'll write it over here as a comment. So again, you can make comments by double forward slash. 50,000, was it 400 or 200? I think it was 400, it's 400. Um, that is the size of our array. That's how many elements or how many integers our array stores. Now, an array index out of bounds exception is generated when we actually exceed the number of um the number of elements that we can store. So, in other words, if we actually hit up debug again, debug not run this time. Debug is very useful, and I'll show you why in a second because run will not be able to do this for you. We'll switch over to the debug perspective by hitting yes, and then we'll come down here. And we've got a few different um, interfaces here. Now, again, this is probably uh, exclusive to Eclipse, as in it's not exclusive, obviously, to Eclipse. But what I mean is um, the layout of everything is just is, is the way that Eclipse lays it out. I'm sure that other IDEs also have, you know, uh, forms for variables and stuff like this, but I don't know where it is in them. So this is just for Eclipse. 
Um, if you're using another ID, you'll have to work it out by yourself. So we've got this variables um, tab here, and we've also got our actual code. Now, if we go down to code and we actually mouse over pixels, it'll give us all the different, um, uh, different, uh, what do you call them? Like groups. So uh, earlier I just said that the array has a size of 50,400. So if I actually, um, let me just probably do it in here just so you guys can see. Um, I'll zoom in as well so you can see. So in the variables, right, if we double click on variables under this, which is referring to this screen class, we'll go to pixels because that's the array that we want to take a look at. And then you'll see that it gives us a bunch of options. Now, remember how I said that the array size was 50,400? You can see that we get um, values or indexes all the way from zero to 50,399. So in total from zero to that equals 50,400. So we've got uh, 50,400 elements in this array. Now, if we drop down one of these, uh, it gives us more. But what you'll see is you'll actually be able to see the value of every single uh, element in our array. Now that's all cool, right? So what is an array index out of bounds exception? Now a common misconception is people think, oh, that's pretty simple, out of bounds. That means one of these numbers is very high. For example, you might find a number. Um, and to demonstrate this actually, what I'll do real quick is, uh, let me just cancel that for a second. Uh, if I come in here and I just screw this and I just make it X plus Y for a second again, and uh, I need actually, oh, we don't need to. I'll just debug it. And then I'll, um, I'll come in here and suspend it. Yep. All right, so I've suspended it just so you can see. Um, if we go into, uh, yeah, okay. Let me just make it crash quickly. So, um, Right next out of bounds exception. Oh, new, my bad. So if we if we launch this and we throw the the exception, um, and we go back into variables, remember what I've done now is I've filled the whole screen in pink, right? If we go into variables and we go into pixels and we go into any one of these groups, um, maybe not every one of these groups. Uh, has it not been drawn yet? Yeah, it hasn't been drawn yet, has it? All right. Um. Let's lower this. Okay, try this one more time. Okay, so in variables, if we go down to any of these, you'll see that they have a number attached to them. And you might be like, you know, is that, is that the reason it's throwing in an array index out of bounds exception? Because that number is insanely high? Well, that's not actually insanely high, it's 16 million. But my point is, because that number is higher than 50,400? No, it doesn't matter. This number can be freaking like really, really high. It does not matter. This is simply the value of that particular index. And as long as it's an integer, which is what we've made it, it can store numbers up to like 3.5 billion or something. Um, or from negative 3.5 billion to positive 3.5 billion. So it's fine in terms of that regard. regard. We haven't done anything wrong at all. This is, this is perfect. Now the problem comes where we actually try to look up a value, right? We actually try to look up an element in the array, an index of an element that is simply does not exist because it's too high. We've only set this array to contain 50,400 different numbers, or different integers, you know, different values. Obviously, somewhere here, the problem is that we're trying to access something that's higher than this number. So 50,401 or something. Technically, um, technically, it actually goes from zero to, to this. Like in total, that actually equals 50,400, but the, the indexes are actually labeled like this. Um, so in other words, if we try to access element number 50,400, oh, array index out of bounds exception, because that element is out of bounds. It does not exist. Um, so let's get back to our previous example. So I'll just change this back to time and time. I'll hop back into the Java um, thing as well. If we go back here, um, we'll watch our pixel crash into the, into the ground. There it is, okay. So if we go in here and we actually do debug this, we can actually do something very simple. We can just hold our mouse over the time variable and it'll actually just tell us the value of that variable at this point in time. Now, that's really useful because we're in a for loop right now and this variable time is, as you can see, it's, well, it's well, we are in a loop. Um, it's 
as you can see, it's continually increasing. So we don't actually, we can't really track what the value of time is. Uh, now this actually allows us to see, you know, because obviously our program has stopped, what the current value of time is. Now we're dealing with 168 plus 168 times width. So if I just bring up a simple calculator here, and I type in 168, oops, my bad, 100, get out, 168 times width, which is 300, right, plus 168, look at that, that number is above 50,400. So in other words, that is why it has crashed, because the number, the number, the number in here right now is, um, uh, 50568, right? It's 50,568. That's exactly what this equals, right? That equals 50,568. Now we cannot access that element because it doesn't exist, right? We can only access element 0 to 50,399. So I hope that makes sense. Um, that's the reason that we actually get that exception because we're simply trying to access an element that is out of bounds. It doesn't exist. We haven't created that many elements in pixels. Um, so, yeah. Now, the second thing you guys might be asking is, okay, great. So we, I, I now know why it's crashing. How do I fix it? Now, the ideal way to fix it is to make sure that we do not go above this. So why is it crashing in the first place, right? Well, it's crashing because we've defined an integer for every single pixel on our screen, right? But, what, but what happens is this pixel actually gets out of the screen and we haven't actually created variables for that region. So it simply crashes. What we need to do is say that if we're actually out of the screen, just don't even render anything because there's no need to, and we don't want to be tracking that data at all. So don't render anything that's out of the screen. If the pixel happens to get out of the screen, just, just, just stop rendering it. Okay. Simple as that. Now, to illustrate this a bit, bit better, I'm actually going to divide this time variable into two different components, x time, which will equal zero, as well as y time, which is going to equal zero as well. Okay, so if I come in here, I'll just change this to x, x, and this one to y. So that's going to be x, and that's going to be y. Okay, just so we can get a bit of, um, bit of variance, a bit of deviation in our thing. So maybe, um, x, uh, maybe y will go a bit faster than x or something. So if I launch it right here, you can see that um, I don't exactly work. Whoops, 800, I meant 80. All right, so yeah, we, we, our, our pixel's traveling down um, and what's gonna happen is it's gonna, it's gonna crash when we reach the bottom. Now, the reason it's crashing is because it's getting out of the Y, right? The height, it's, it's, it's getting out um, of the Y. It's getting out vertically out of the screen. So how do we fix that? Well, over here, right? Under, in, in our y area of our for loop, we can simply type if, and think about this logically, we wanna basically type right now, if that pixel gets out of the screen, you know, get out of this loop, just abandon it, don't render it, cause it's out of the screen. We don't need, we don't need to render that particular pixel anymore. So again, we're gonna say if x time, Um, and I realize at this point that this uh, while loop is sort of redundant because, sorry, this for loop is sort of redundant because we're using this, but we'll get back to it later. Um, we want to say if x time, oh, sorry, if y time, which is our y vertical thing, is greater than or equal to height, so that's the height of our actual window. So in other words, if the y coordinate exceeds the bottom of the window, if it goes past that, then break. And what is break going to do? Break is just going to break out of the for loop. Simple as that. It's just going to ignore the code that comes after it and just go to the next iteration of the for loop. That's it. So now if we hit debug or run, doesn't really matter. And we watch this little pixel. What's going to happen is when it reaches ground, look at that. It keeps, it's, well, it appears that it keeps going, but really it's just stopped rendering. And you can see that we don't crash. Now, the other problem is if I, um, if I set X time to something like 50 and I set this to something like eight or rather 800 and we watch, uh, I don't really work. Huh, hang on a minute. Didn't I set X time to 50? Oh, my bad. I meant to set Y time to 50. Okay. 
So yeah, now that we're starting uh, close to the center, if we watch this, so we've, we've dealt with Y, but what happens is if we actually go um, out of the screen, X, Y is still gonna crash because we haven't dealt with, okay, it's not gonna crash, but it's gonna, it's gonna loop. Um, and again, that's because we don't, we've got a one dimensional array. So it's actually gonna loop. That's sort of a problem as well. And we don't want that to happen. So, um, hmm. so what, what we can say in that case is basically the same thing here, but for X. So if, if X time is greater than or equal to width, we can, we can break. So if we take a look at this, we'll, um, we'll see what happens. Dun, 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 Now, look at that. Pixel does not appear again. Great. It worked. Um, now, a lot of you guys probably have the question of, oh, first of all, let's just speed this up. I'm like wasting time here. So you can see that when the pixel gets to the thing, it doesn't appear. Um, and if we didn't have this code, I can comment it out. It'll actually keep, uh, keep going. Now, why does it keep going? That's probably a question that's crossed all your minds. Why does it keep going? Now, the reason it keeps going is remember I said, I showed you guys that grid. I'm not gonna, I don't have time to bring it out again, but I, show, I showed you guys that grid where what happens is when it gets to the edge of the screen, um, the, the, the pixel, the index, it jumps to the next um, line or, or the next row of the screen because that's just how um, you know, a single dimension array works. As soon as, as soon as we get to the edge of the screen, we jump down to the next row. That's how our index works. That's how this works. All right, so unfortunately that's all I have time for today. It was quite a long episode. Uh, we'll deal with a few different quirks as well next episode, and I'll see you guys then. Bye.